Hello, welcome to the Game Mess Game Club. This is Mike Minotti, and we are here today to talk about Ghost Trick, Phantom Detective by Capcom, originally released on the Nintendo DS, 2010 Japan, 2011 in North America. Very recently had a remaster, came out last year for Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Windows. Um, this game has been on uh, iOS. You can play this video game everywhere. And you probably should. This has uh, been a game that I have talked fondly of for a long time. So I'm excited to see more people playing this one, getting in there. It seemed like, you know, this this rem the remaster came out at a rough time last year because there's just so many games to play. I'm not sure if it got as much love as I would have liked, but uh, maybe we'll encourage a few more people to check it out. So I guess my first question uh, for anyone here is, is this the first time you played the game or at least played through it? Did you play it before or was it because of this game club or the remaster that you finally dove in here? Again, for me, I uh, played this game when it came out on the DS, largely because there was a uh, Phoenix Wright people involved in this game. And I love Phoenix Wright. I loved old school, like point and click adventure games. And Phoenix Wright for me was kind of the successor to that in a lot of ways. Um, and this even more so, uh, cause if Phoenix Wright is like mostly a visual novel with some kind of adventure game elements, Ghost Trick is really about that kind of puzzle stuff first. And yeah, there's characters and there's story and there's dialogue, but I think as a pure puzzle game, this is as satisfying as it gets. So yeah, anybody want to jump in and let me know if, uh, I get anybody plays, uh, before now, uh, Adam GC, go ahead. I had not heard of Ghost Trick until all of y'all wouldn't shut up about it uh, last year. Um, I am not Mr. Point-and-Click Adventure Game like you are. Um, I don't know if this game necessarily converted me, but this is a really fun little game. Uh, it's got really fun writing. Uh, really fun characters. Um, yeah, I had some nitpicks, but it really grew on me the more uh, I played it, and I really enjoyed my time with Ghost Trick. Jedi Moss, go ahead. Yeah, so I also like him. I also did not know anything about Ghost Trick until the remaster was announced in last year and finally got around to playing it because I had heard it was like a big, it was sort of a big cult uh, classic among the Capcom folks. And so I finally decided to check it out. Actually, at the very end of 2023, I think it was one of the last games in 2023 that I actually played. I think it was, I played it on, remember playing it on New Year's Eve. So, it was. I thought that was a good way to close out the year, and yeah, I was also very impressed with how it came out on, yeah, on similar things. So the writing was very good. The puzzles were interesting. I love the music to this. The music in this game is fantastic. So yeah, I just ended up having a very good time with it, and I sort of kept it on the back of my mind even a few months afterwards. That I did have such a good a good experience with it. Right. Great. Uh, but yeah, it's like uh, go Nick Turbo. Go ahead. Yeah, so this is my first time playing Ghost Trick, is this remaster. Um, I'm not a huge fan of puzzle games, especially puzzle games that time you, because they don't usually make me feel dumb. Uh, but I think I really like this one. It was a lot of the writing, just the charm. It really got me through it. And I thought that the puzzles were mostly, in most cases, like, actually, like, you could actually think them out instead of just being frustrated and have to look at the guide. And, you know, that time element's interesting because there's it's a time element, but it's also a kind of a Groundhog's Day element here where you have the set amount of time. You kind of keep working on it to basically divert a bad outcome. Go ahead, Inufe. So this was the first time I played all the way through Ghost Trick. Um, I bought it when it came out in 2004. Does that sound right? Original release. Um, but I just never got around to playing it. Um, so I just rebought this, uh, the remaster on, on PC and, um, played all the way through on Steam Deck and, uh, it seems to, they played perfectly fine in the remaster. The, the thing I wanted, I noticed as soon as you boot it up is that they kind of ported the entire game to the RE engine, um, which I found, uh, quite funny and humorous for reasons. Um, I guess Capcom mm -hmm. just using that thing for everything, no matter what. Um, but yeah, it, uh, like I said, the music, I'm kind of echoing everything else everybody's said so far, but. Um, I've really enjoyed my time with it. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Rare Monkey. 
Yeah, uh, this actually, I knew of Ghost Trick, but this is my first time finally playing it. It was been on my uh, backlog for a long time now, and uh, very much enjoyed it. It was a fun, pretty simple uh, uh, point-and-click style game. It was it was great. I mean, yeah. And that point-and-clicky part, that is why it kind of worked so well on the DS uh, originally. Go ahead, Shoji Kodo. Yeah, so with me, um, uh, first of all, apologies if my my mic is pretty bad. I'm outside right now. You sound fine. Um, but yeah, this was my first time with it. I knew of it, and then when it did re-release last year, I bought it day one, and you know, it, stuff came up eventually, and it immediately went into the backlog. Um, so I'm I'm really glad that we chose this, and I had a a great great. Time. All right. Good. Go ahead, Gerber. Yeah, I I did play it when it came out on the DS. Aesthetic because and overall feel. Oh, sorry, Shoji Kota, you went out there for a second. I thought you were done. Oh, go ahead, Gerber. Oh, already. I did play it when it came out on the DS because as a kind of rare game, what well, it was, looked like it was going to be a rare game, you had to buy it day one at, before digital distribution, which seems odd now to say. But I have... I guess to a heavy drink, and I've forgotten most of the story, so it was almost a no new experience. <laughs> right, that's what I, yeah, because it was like, what, 2010, I said, for the original release, so yeah, by now it's been uh, long enough that, although, you know, the things that I do remember even now, if not necessarily specific plus points, are the characters, and I guess I'll ask this right now, because this is something I harped on forever, that I think Missile, on my shirt right now, is the greatest video game dog of all time, one of the all-time great video game characters. So now that more people have played this game, do you agree or disagree with my love for Missile? Go ahead, Adam GC. Uh, Missile is the bestest boy ever, full stop. Yes, Missile. Uh, this is just so good. I love that name, too. And I just that incredibly perky, fun energy. It's just such a good little doggy. Go ahead, Inufei. Uh, yeah, probably the second best dog outside of the dog in Fable 2, which was the only reason to play Fable 2, and it's the uh, best ending. Okay. Uh, second best dog. I'll, I'll allow it. Matt Rare Monkey. Yeah, I can't think of a better dog than Missile in a game, so we're going Missile Best Dog. Uh, and, you know, what's great is that it's not just this character, because Missile becomes mechanically and plot-wise very important later, and there will be some spoilers. Everybody will get into that. Jedi Moss, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm I'm also tend to be kind of in your camp with with dogs sometimes in games where I kind of roll my eyes when people highlight the dog too much. But this is an example of where they, actually this is just a very well written character, and I like I wasn't a, the number one fan of this dog until the very very end where you get one that fast plot twist at the very end where it turns out all of this was machinated by this dog kind of in the first. Place. That's kind of how the whole adventure gets kicked off. And I thought that was a very nice, clever bit of writing to sort of cap off the story there. Yes, it's fantastic. Go ahead, Shoji Koto. Yeah, um, definitely kind of agree with everyone's sentiments there. Uh, and, and one of the things that I, I kind of noticed, and I wasn't sure if anyone else drew similar parallels or anything like that, um, is very similar to like the story of, of like Hachiko in a way, in terms of he was waiting for his owner for kind of that 10 year span. Um, and for anyone really not familiar with, with Hachiko is that famous dog in Japan uh, where he would visit his, his uh, owner at the train station when he came home from work every day. And then one day his owner passed away while at work and he continued to wait at that train station at the same time every day for like nine additional years before he also passed. So just kind of like, I, I felt there was some like major parallels there in terms of like that dedication and that loyalty that you saw with with Missile. And I know about Hachiko because of the world ends with you in Persona Five. Uh, go ahead, Nick Turbo. Yeah, Missile is definitely a uh, good boy. Probably not my favorite. I just finished uh, Persona Three Reload right before, and I have to say, Koromaro is slightly better dog. Speaking of dogs that are very similar to uh, coach, uh, to that uh, that 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 dog from the statue in Shibuya that showed you could was just talking about, Kormara is a good dog too. Yeah, I felt like when you first meet Missile, I thought it's like yeah, this is funny, but like you 
leave him so quickly, like, and, and then he goes away for a long time, but when, as soon as he comes back, like, he comes up, become, like, integral part of the plot, and I thought, like, how they used him was really funny, like, like, kind of smart, like, he was, was so loyal, like, he has to use his powers. Yeah, and, um, I just, uh, man, we first beat, uh, Missile 2, he gets a, a, a shot, right, <laughs> killed which is why you're uh the dog is so important because you play as a, a dead character you're a spirit that's why you're sort of able to communicate with missile and you both have these powers that only the dead can have but they are slightly different um in kind of working with missiles powers becomes very important because missile has a bigger range in terms of jumping between objects and while um you know the, the main character of sissel can manipulate objects right uh missile can exchange objects objects as long as they are of like a similar shape so like two balls can be moved so you can do something where like a, where a small ball was now a big ball is and that can really change the situation it's just stuff like this like looking in the world and looking for those of moments where you can uh manipulate the environment and again it is that kind of groundhog's day thing where it's usually um, well, originally somebody dies, so you're going to rewind time now, just a few minutes, that's your power, and you are going to fix it and make it better. Go ahead, Gerber. Yeah, well, Missile's arc was the main thing that stuck with me from the story of the game from playing it over 10 years ago. So, like, I don't think I can give any higher praise to the character, to Missile's character, apart from, like, I remember his story and his name. Sissel's name was gone, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, Jedi Moss, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm so like the main thing I'm impressed by, with especially with how the gameplay functions, is kind of how well structured it is. And like, yeah, you do have a time limit, and not, and that's actually a very small window where you're trying to do it within, you know, a couple of minutes at most, trying to finish the puzzle. But the game is also pretty generous too, with like, oh, if you messed up, we'll let you know if you messed up, and then you can turn back time. And so like, the game is is giving you a a, a bit of a bit of a um a bit of leeway in terms of like just keep experimenting you'll eventually get the hang of it you'll figure out these puzzles eventually if you keep at it yeah i i just i do think that the quality of the puzzles here again is uh is really impressive at least when i played it originally i don't remember ever getting full on stuck to a point that i had to look something up which you know back when i played all those point and click adventure games i talk about loving so much i had to look something up multiple times in all of those games because there would always be something sort of obtuse um here it seemed like there's always generally a very good logic to things i, I remember there are some levels where the scale of it does become intimidating or, or like there's one part where you have to help a guy uh, kind of get out of jail and i remember like it, it's very big right and sometimes that can be intimidating, but it always felt good and it always logically made sense. Go ahead, Adam GC. Yeah, intimidating is a very good word for some of those sections, especially that prison one. Because um, the one thought I had was those four minute timer sections like that is when the game is cooking. Like that is when it was at its absolute best for me. I did find the in-between parts to be a little tedious at times and, and that prison uh breakout one uh was the one that kind of stuck in my head uh for that where you're just kind of you know you're not doing the rewind and finding the patterns you're just kind of you know mashing the cursor around at, at times trying to just like okay let's let's get this advanced what's the right thing to click already go ahead matt yeah uh in general all of them felt pretty uh good and like uh like obvious where you were supposed to go the only one that felt where it was like uh, you're gonna have to do a bunch of trial and error. Was kind of the uh, pill bottle one, uh, I would say, where you have to kind of like it literally tells you beforehand. You're like, oh, we might have to try a few things to figure out the order type type of stuff. So it's like it's not like as obvious as the other one, I would say. Yeah, and I do think there is still some like trial and error stuff in there uh, for sure. That definitely can be still a part of it. Uh, go ahead, Nick. I think there was only one puzzle that I had a really hard time with, and I had to look up a guide. And that was the one in the park where you first get the missile, and you have to help the hippie from dying. And Is just that learning, the one? Uh, missiles, missiles, new power, and how they quickly the swapping quickly because that one's really short with the hippie coming in really quick. Is that the one where missiles like on that leaf and like? 
missile kind of like floats in. I remember the first time I played the game, I didn't get to missile fast enough. So it, the leaf just kind of went away and missile like said something really sad, like, well, goodbye forever then, or something. And like, I forget if it was immediately a game over or what, but you can't progress after that. And it felt terrible. No, it was before that one. Okay. Uh, I just remembered that. It was like, oh, well. he got, he got like blown away or like carried away. Um, Jedi, go ahead. So I know we obviously Missile is among the best characters, not the best character in all of gaming. We know this, but who else do we think among this cast? I would. What's our other favorite character from this game? I think the one I do like the most is uh the Inspector, the Inspector character. First off, he has a great animation. His introductory animation is great, and I like the way that they eventually go around to writing him towards the end. So, what's everyone else's favorite character? I, I like a lot of the characters. I mean, I do like Sissel, actually. Sissel is fun. I think Lynn, uh, you know, is is also uh, pretty fun. You know, the, the, the female detective, the kind of the, the secondary main uh, character. Uh, I, I swear that what's her face from the future Phoenix Wright games or the newer ones is just basically that character. Uh, reminds me of her so much. Um, but yeah, other, does that, do other people have any other favorite characters they want to uh, bring up here? Go ahead, Inufe. Um, yeah, just real quick, back to the, uh, the puzzles real quick. I think the only one that I got stuck on was the, um, the chandelier one, where you have to, like, capture her, and, uh, you have to capture the mom and lift her up in the chandelier. Um, but yeah, I think other than that, I think all the puzzles were pretty straightforward. They were a little, I think they were a little easier than some of the stuff in the Phoenix Wright games, where sometimes it feels like you're really stretching for some of those cases and towards the end in Phoenix Wright to put the stuff together, but... Uh, I never felt like any of those. Like most of these, felt logical. Um, but in terms of characters, I think Lynn was probably my second favorite. Um, you know, outside of, out, of course, outside of Missile. Yeah, and you, you know, as much as I love the Phoenix Wright games, there are a lot of frustrating times where something makes sense logically in your head in terms of making a case or like trying to like prove something with evidence, but the game is only programmed in such so such a strict way can't really explain to the game how you're thinking so you have to do it your way you don't really have that problem necessarily uh here uh go ahead adam gc yeah lynn is a also a very fun character in the way that she has this like total ambivalence towards repeatedly dying in just increasingly gruesome ways uh it's very entertaining (laughs) yeah absolutely uh gerber i like the author slash minister's wife because I didn't. I'm not sure if anyone else tried this, but you can dial into some phones, even when the story isn't demanding you to dial into those phones. And you see her at various points during the night, and she always has her glass of, I'm assuming it's alcohol, and just doing talking strange, hard to put together sentences. But at the same time, she, like everyone in the story, she has an arc. She doesn't. She's not just a character. She does play a significant part in the story. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, so, kind of another thing. Yeah, uh, I wanted to bring up, uh, but I'll let Nick Turbo go uh, real quick. But uh, think about this. Maybe is the art style. That's something that maybe looks a little bit different, but uh, still, I think pretty faithful. Because there was kind of almost a pre-rendered rotoscope. I don't know if that's what you call it, but it was a pretty distinct feel to the way this game looked, especially the character models before. I wonder what people thought of that, but go ahead, Nick. I was going to say quickly say, like, my favorite characters were those two uh, police officers in the prison. The one that's always dancing. Mm-hmm. Oh. And the, the art style, I liked it. It kind of gave me, at least the remaster, gave me, like, a bit of flash, like it kind of looked like flash animation, kind of. Yeah, I could definitely. There definitely is a, a a bit of that. Don't tell Dan Reichert; he'll he'll hate it. Uh, but yeah, I see. I know what you mean from that a little bit. Uh, Jedi Moss, go ahead. Yeah, so I did kind of look up a little bit of what sort of the differences were between this remaster and the original. Is apparently they had to do like quite a bit of downscaling of their artwork to get it to fit on the DS, which I guess is understandable the DS being what it was at the time. So with the remaster, they were actually able to take a lot of those original assets and actually just spruce them up to, you know, the highest possible quality and basically use those. So it is like the best possible version of what they used for the DS. Um, In terms of the art sale, I think 
it works well enough. I mean, it's got a nice, colorful vibe to it, and you know, you can easily make out like who is who, where all the objects are placed. That's especially important puzzle game. Um, it lends itself well enough, especially to being a portable experience, which of course that was the intent of it. And I think it helps too when it comes to you know the fact you're killing off these characters and in increasingly gruesome ways over and over again. But because it's in this cartoony sort of cartoony style, it never feels that. It never feels uh, that uh, uncomfortable when it comes to that element of the story. Yeah, even though there is so much peril and death, it's yeah, it's not a very gruesome, not even really that much of a dark game. Somehow still manages to feel lighthearted. And another thing I like about the art style, you know, it, it is very clean. It's colorful still. There's a lot of vibrant, bright colors, very like a lot of solid colors, not a lot of texture. And it's in a way that makes things easy to read. Also, a lot of sharp edges in the character designs, right? A lot of characters that have like the super pointed nose and, you know, sleeves that again come at these really sharp points. It's a very striking style. Hello, Sean. How's it going? Hi, pretty good. I was taking care of some stuff, so that's why I'm coming in a little bit late, but I have been listening in. So I'll just uh, rapid fire real quick to get myself caught up here. Uh, when I was looking for the best way to play DS games recently, I found out that it is on a DSi XL. If you're into original hardware like I am, hey, those can be found for pretty cheap still. Maybe pick one up. But when I uh, got my hands on one of those, I tried out a bunch of the best DS games and DS games on my backlog. And that's how I ended up on Ghost Trick because I was like, man, I love the Ace Attorney series. Hey, that's, uh, you know, a lot of the same people here. So I'm going to head on over to this one, check it out. And I absolutely loved it. Uh, even playing it, you know, like a decade after it came out, I think it holds up very, very well. Uh, the Mount Rushmore of video game dogs is absolutely Missile, Rush from uh, Mega Man, Koromaru from Persona 3, and of course, that dog from Resident Evil 4. Uh, <laughs> as far as characters, uh, would just be mine. Lynn just absolutely freaking rules, and we don't need to analyze why I think that. And <laughs> in, in terms of the art style, uh, I think it is uh, just timeless, just like the Ace Attorney games are, when you have this hand-drawn art that you then translate onto a 2D space, and you keep it small scale it's like uh it's like wind waker you know cell shading and whatnot it just it'll live on in perpetuity you have this hd version it looks very clean yeah the animation is very simple and everything but also like sometimes it's it's very striking to see like um like nick mentioned uh the police officer was always dancing and to see him his model like twirl in and everything i think they did a good, good job of keeping simple animations but it uh it translates very well from concept art to model to the ds screen and now with the hd version i think it all looks very clean and like you mentioned mike uh very dark themes broadly speaking but it's done in a comical way it's almost in like uh an adams family type of thing or something where it's where uh like a series i love you know dark stalkers where they take these like morbid themes and just have fun with it and kind of like are silly with it and goofy even if it does get legitimately dark sometimes with the drama and everything i think it's uh presentation wise just absolutely fantastic yeah uh you know you kind of mentioned the timeless qualities of the game i think that's a good point i think a lot of this game is just timeless uh kind of art wise and design wise i think with this remaster now it kind of gives them a version of the game but i hope they just continue to kind of just port to everything going forward uh, forever. So I'm glad that Ghost Trick is a game that is not going to easily be lost to time and, and never should be. Uh, go ahead, Adam GC. Yeah, just to follow up on Sean's point there about um, original hardware. Uh, yeah, so I played this remaster. It was the first time I played it and it controlled fine. Like the controls totally work. Um, but I could not help but feel like, ah, I really wish I was playing this on the DS because it is really hard to replicate uh the feeling of playing on that stupid little stylus and scribbling all over um that plastic screen pushing a cursor around with the joystick just just doesn't quite feel the same i was actually getting a little sad at one point because i was like hey man the ds is just gone <laughs> forever like we're not getting controls like that ever again yeah and I, I think it is important to note real quick since i don't think it's been brought up uh if anyone played the hd version you was uh, essentially played a port of the ios version that came out uh not even that long after the ds version but that version was you know slightly higher res and of course was single screen touch controls and that was used as the foundation for this one which is why uh i 
don't know if it has touch controls on Switch. Someone uh, let me know if it does, but I, I would assume it does. I even tried it, it out at one point. Sorry, I tried it and it, it didn't no. work. Yeah. Okay. Well, even if it did, it, it just never, would never feel as good as like no. the smaller screen in the stylus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, was somebody saying something about it? It, it could work. Yeah, yeah, it works on Steam Deck. It was working oh. fine for me on Steam Deck. Oh, so that would be really because awesome. Steam Deck translates a uh, mouse, uh, mouse to the touch yeah. screen. Yeah, the, so that's, yeah, it actually okay. felt pretty good to use it on Steam Deck. Oh well, there. Although you go. mouse controls would actually feel pretty good on this game, I bet. The Switch version also know. works with uh, the touch screen. So. Oh, it does. Okay, it does. Okay, cool. There you go then. Uh, Gerber, go ahead. Yeah, well, I think the just going back to the character design for a minute. I think it has held up a lot better than the Miles Edgeworth game, which was largely the same people because the two D the two D sprites in that game they don't do anywhere near as good a job of conveying the character's feelings as it we see in the Ghost Trick. I think that's right. Yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. Just from what I remember, I remember it was a simpler looking game. Not that it was a bad looking game, but you're right. This is, you know, that's also DS. It's from that same era. Yeah, but man, you know, even though I am glad Ghost Trick is on all these um, other platforms, it is always something I am going to associate with the DS. And there's a part of me it's like, man, if I'm going to play this again, like maybe instead of downloading on my Switch or playing my PC, maybe I get the DS back out again, or maybe hope we get more of these Chinese handhelds or whatever that Jeff Grubb's always collecting, and one of them's gonna have dual screens, and I'll just load a ROM on there or something like that. Uh, go ahead, Inufe. I guess the only big difference is uh, the soundtrack is not doesn't sound quite as compressed, um, and there is right. actually it does feel a little different. Um, some of the mood, I guess, when you I, <clears throat> I did go back and. The soundtrack is so excellent in this game. I kind of com- went back and compared and contrast like the difference between the remastered and the original DS version. But that's really the only big difference uh, in terms of you know it's it's more compressed. So some of the songs that are a little more moody and atmospheric, it adds a little bit to it, I think, and how kind of clean it sounds on the on the newer ones. Not quite as grungy. Oh, that, that's a good point. Something I didn't even think about. Go ahead, Nick Turbo. Yeah, so. I played this on Xbox, and you can definitely tell it was not made for a controller. But I think it did all right. I think there's only one point where the controls really messed me up. It was that one where Lynn gets crushed by crushed by the giant chicken, and <laughs> like there's one point you have to like swing on a get on a pendulum that's swinging, and you only have like one or two cycles of the pendulum swinging that you can make it before it fail but i kept failing that because i always had a hard time switching over back to the ghost trick back in time and then moving the control stick to the pendulum right when it was at the perfect fulcrum i could definitely see that being more frustrating without having touch controls there go ahead jedi moss yeah uh so first off i yeah the controls they are what they are i think they are adequate although it's not going to be the same as using that ds hardware uh, in terms of you know, the when <laughs> being crushed by the chicken, that actually reminds me of what are y'all's what are y'all's favorite puzzle in the game? You know, there's a whole bunch of them. I you know I know some of this might be based off memory, but I think for me the one that I was uh, most um, that I was most impressed by was the one in the kitchen of the chicken restaurant with the chef and the we later find out to be a spy that both are trying to you know tag the chicken for the listening device and you're trying to keep that from happening i thought it was a very well designed puzzle what do you guys where, what's your favorite puzzle yeah uh go ahead adam gc you have a favorite I, puzzle i was just gonna say the kitchen was my favorite level uh with that little chef guy with the bottle of wine under his hat that kept flipping up and down you had to like switch between the chicken plates and swapping them around that was excellent uh inufe uh, I love the prison break level where you get jowed and you get to roll them like a ball. That was my absolute favorite. You know, uh, and uh, this kind of transitions into maybe a bit more spoilery stuff here, uh, people. So if you don't want spoilers, story and gameplay wise, uh, look out. But um, I loved in the end how it kind of all came together where you had, you know, you, you, you've had uh, uh, you've had these two characters abilities this one missile, and then all of a sudden you get this third one and you're using all three of these to kind of solve the most important puzzle. I don't know why, like that really worked for me in terms of like 
gameplay design and still feeling dramatic. Like that, it got me like hyped up. It felt important, dare I say. Go ahead, Nick Turbo. I like the one where you have to hide that you're doing the ghost trick from the villain so he doesn't see you and give you a game over. I like that where you had to try to stop the contraption without him noticing it. Yeah, that's a good oh, man. Just it, there's a lot of great stuff here. Oh, um, I do really want to get into a real spoiler race moment now. So again, everyone's been warned, but I want to know: Did anybody see the plot twist coming, where we discover that this was a cat the entire time? Did anyone? Because I didn't see that coming. Go ahead, Jedi Moss. No, I did not see that coming. But of course, like, you know, this I think the game very overall has fantastic writing. Like, this is a very well-written detective story in that very traditional sense of, like, you're going to have a whole bunch of twists and turns. You know, there's going to be double crosses and triple crosses and characters switching allegiances, doing things that may not seem clear at first, but then eventually you'll come back around to them. It's very well designed in that way, where, yeah, you eventually get to the cat, and it is something that does surprise you, but when you go back and you look at it, like there were signs and pieces of evidence that let you know like this is what they were building up to. It, it is fun to play the game again and see some of the stuff, and it makes sense. And yeah, you know, we we talk about some of the best um, plot twists in, in video games uh, ever, right? I think KOTOR is always up there pretty high for me. Um, this is one that, yeah, doesn't get brought up a ton, but it's a really fun plot twist, actually, and it recontextualizes a, a lot of things, and uh changes character relationships and all that stuff go ahead adam gc yeah it's a really fun reveal at the end especially because the whole game you're kind of building this re awkward relationship with the dog and then you realize at the end it's like i was a cat the whole time oh yeah <laughs> right. a lot of that makes sense <laughs> right and you get a really cute ending uh there too right and it, i do love that it just you know we just get a very 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 happy ending at the end of this game and it feels good Right, this is with Lynn. Got a cute little bow because you know Sissa was just this street cat. Um, gosh, yeah, it just all comes together and it gives me warm fuzzies. I, I love it. Go ahead, Shoji Koto. Yeah, I thought it all came together great. Um, and, and I was scratching my head. Like the further we got along, and and you saw like the you know the villain. You basically, I forget, I forget his uh, name. I was starting to think like, okay when when this whole uh situation had occurred with the the meteor crashing down the temsic uh meteor or whatever um it did that split his soul into multiple pieces is kind of what i was thinking because I, I was like okay he's right there but then i'm here and then when that twist occurred and you're like oh wow i was i was there the entire time um and i, I was just and i thought back to it i was i was my jaw was on the floor i was just like this is this is amazing and like it all made sense and you saw the little breadcrumbs here and there showing like this was all relevant and it was, i totally did not see that coming at all it was, it was great it's such a it's such a fun uh twist uh, uh go ahead nick uh thought the cat twist was interesting a twist that i wasn't really into was the whole explaining why you have the ghost trick abilities because of the meteorite i just feel like i've seen so many like super games with supernatural elements like ghosts it's like oh how they explain it's like it's aliens like i feel like they try to over explain why there's supernatural elements it's basically the plot of final fantasy 7 it's just a yeah asteroid landed with an alien i just felt like yeah why is there supernatural elements oh it's just aliens i don't think it's the worst tw that twist because i've seen it a lot of times with like supernatural media but it's I just feel like it's kind of silly and overplayed. Just like you can't just have it be a ghost; it has to be aliens too. At least it wasn't the multiverse. Uh, go ahead, Sean. <laughs> well, um, first of all, shouts to Meteor Mommies, and second of all, just to answer the question broadly of did I see blank coming? Uh, hell no. <laughs> like, a lot of it comes out of nowhere, but in the best possible way. Where uh, like, like multiple people mentioned, it all comes together in a way where like. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yep. You laid it. You laid the breadcrumb trail. Yep. That's very clever. You can just tell this issue could Takumi joint because of 
of course, like the Ace Attorney games always come together in the same way. Or like, uh, was it Ace Attorney three? I think has the best moment of, oh no freaking way! It all came together, and it just it makes you hype. It's a great story. It's the kind of thing where I play these games at like four a.m. and I just that uh, you know I get the little pop that keeps me going through the night. I just need to finish it to see how the story ends. And I just I love the writing in all of these games. And Ghost Trick is just it's such a well written uh, detective story on the level that I like where it's just it doesn't take itself too seriously ever it's always just very fun even when they are getting to all this high level stuff like alternate timelines and like uh going back and forth within the same timeline etc like, I think it's very fun and I really appreciate it yeah hype's interesting that's interesting work is yeah like for a puzzle game basically with like some visual novel stuff like I got so hyped up playing this game I would get so excited and have a hard time putting it down go ahead jedi moss yeah and going back to nick's point yeah it's a bit of a contrivance i mean yeah meteor falling from space that's a very that's a very contrived thing but i mean it works for what they're trying to do here and i guess you know i think in terms of the internal logic um i think it's nice and i think it's actually very cool one of the other big twists of course when we find out about the dog's role in the puzzle is that they do, he, he does this say, yeah, one of the mechanics was that was just a straight up lie to you, so that way you actually played the game correctly. <laughs> I do. I that was actually that. a very fun little twist that they did at the very end. Right, because like we see, there's a war or missile, like just like lays it all out for real. It just was like, ah, I'm not going to do that. Bye. <laughs> so this one does, like, I guess I'm going to have to lie. And that's like what motivates Cecil originally until eventually he does kind of like actually have a good heart about it and becomes selfless but it, you know there's good character growth there again makes her just another really fun reveal go ahead gerber yeah well i like that there is an explanation beyond just amnesia for not being able to read and even if it is that you <laughs> are so a cat that was such that was one of the best parts of that reveal it's like why why can't Cecil read because he's a fucking cat i love it it's incredible uh, Shoji Kota, go ahead. Yeah, even outside of the whole, um, you know, you uh, missile had lied to you to to get you to go along and, and you know go with your more selfish motiv- selfish motivations of you know I want to you know figure out who I am. Um, the the whole aspect of you know he even lied to you about the time frame that you had to do that within a certain amount of time or else you would disappear forever as a ghost. Like that was all entirely a lie because he wanted it to line up perfectly with when the whole submarine section was going to occur. Cause that was that split second that you would only be able to get back to detective Jowd and then go back even further and kind of solve everything. So just like kind of the lies on top of the lies, like there was just all these great layers of everything unfolding where I guess technically it didn't even matter. It just wasn't relevant. So, kind of one of my uh, last questions here is, does it bother anybody that this game is a one-off? Would you have liked to have seen a sequel? Or are you happy to have it be kind of a one-and-done uh, thing? Go ahead, Jedi Moss. I mean, I don't think we need a direct I think they did this story perfectly. And there's no, there's no, nothing else left to follow up with these characters. So, like, if they were wanting to do another one, I think they would have to do it, you know, with a new cast, with a new setting. You know, if they want to kind of go to that route, I'd be fine with that. But even if we didn't get any more, I mean, this is kind of a perfect one off game. It's kind of untouchable in many ways. So if they don't make any other ones, I'm, I'd am i be fine with that. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I am with it, too. It's a kind of reminds me of like my relationship with another one of my favorite games, Griffin Dango. I'm like, man, they kind of did everything they needed to do right there. They sort of nailed it in one, as they say. Go ahead, Nick. I think I would enjoy a game similar to this. I just also feel like I would like more games from the Ace Attorney people that aren't just Ace Attorney, because Ace Attorney is fun, but kind of gets old after a while, just being a defense attorney after a while. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that. You know, hey, I love I love Ace Attorney too. We sure have had a lot of Ace Attorney games, uh, no doubt, even though I could kind of go for one right now, and I, I'm sure we're probably going to get one soon here. Inufe, go ahead. I think I'd like another game that plays like this, but I don't think I want the same cast back again, right? Like, you know, if you did a Ghost Trick 2, like, just just completely new set of characters, right? Um, But Shu Takumi has not done anything since 2017, so maybe he's, I don't know what he's working on in Capcom, I guess the last 
The great ace attorney, I think, was those, those last two games. Were the last yeah. thing he did. He was a uh, he was a quest writer for Monster Hunter Riders. Yeah. What, what uh, that is. If we're looking at that Wikipedia, I am also amazed that he was the director of Dino Crisis Two. I did not. Is that great? Right? <laughs> yes. That's so his that. first directing game, and then like the next year, he directed Ace Attorney instead, and <laughs> never looked back. <laughs> yeah, like what a swing of series, right? Uh, yeah. But yeah, like I, I'd like to see more from him outside of the Ace Attorney stuff. But he's probably just in a uh, comfy Capcom position now, so he's probably not in a rush. Go ahead, Sean. So this is a bit of a cop out answer, but uh, I, I can't sort of can't separate it from what I'm gonna say here. Uh, if you know the development history of Shu Takumi's games at Capcom, uh, <laughs> you maybe empathize with the guy a little bit more for wanting to do just a one off, like because uh, yeah. Ghost Trick was like to my understanding a thing he wanted to do to sort of break out of Ace Attorney because Ace Attorney was always intended to be a trilogy. That's why three just is such a finale on the whole thing. And then Apollo Justice completely swerves in an opposite direction because Capcom was like, these games are doing really well. We really want to do more of them. And, you know, he waffles. And it's like, fine. Okay, you know what? The fans want it. I'll do it. But the stipulation is we're going to get a little crazy with it. It's going to be like in the future. It's going to be a different character. Phoenix is going to be the mentor and everything like that. And so there's a history here of this. this just sweet guy. Like, I forget what it was for. It may was for, uh, I think it was for Great Ace Attorney when that finally got localized, where he said he was in the Capcom presentation. And just, you know, this, this sweet older gentleman uh, speaking in very good English. And at the end, he's like, and, and I practiced my English uh, for this segment for two weeks because I really wanted the international fans mm -hmm. to be able to talk to you directly. I'm like, this guy, it just he just wants to make his games. He just wants to make them the way he wants to. Even if sometimes, <laughs> like, uh, the, the company says we want more. He's like, okay, I'll do it for the fans. You know what? This man has earned whatever the hell he wants to do. And I, I just want more games from him and this team, whoever was involved with the other uh, games like this. I think that would be very cool. But at the same time, listen, dude, you, you earned whatever rest or whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, and that, still, I don't think I'm going to be shocked if we find out that he's like the director on Ace Attorney uh, 7. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when that gets announced probably pretty soon here. Um, all right, let's do some closing thoughts, everybody. What did you overall think of this game? Um, uh, I wonder if if you're like me, where uh, this is one of my favorites. I think this is like a Mount Rushmore of DS games, a Mount Rushmore of kind of puzzle adventure games. It's just such a memorable, lovely game that I'm always excited whenever I hear anybody either tell me that they have played it or told me that or tell me that they are going to play it. Go ahead, Jedi Moss. Yeah, it's very funny. I remember for a large portion of 2023, which was a very packed year, I was sort of like teasingly, like, um, you know, playfully telling folks, oh, yeah, maybe I'll get around to it. Maybe not. It's a small game. I don't know if I'll get around to it at some point. But it's funny is as soon as when I actually finished up playing it during the last days of 2023, it immediately, I think, shot up close to my top 10 for that year. It was just a phenomenal game. And I actually actively sought out and got the physical edition that they actually ship in Asia. So I just got an import of that and just put it into my collection because I wanted the physical so much. I love this game. Good, good. Oh, I, I just always love it. just makes me happy in hearing other people love this game. Does anybody not, though? You can tell me. It's okay. Because so far, I don't think I heard anybody not on this game's side. I don't think we have any detractors. I think everybody at least has some appreciation for Ghost Trick. Uh, I, I, it's hard to imagine somebody just straight up not liking this game unless they have, you know, zero patience for, uh, like, you know, even the dialogue doesn't seem that intrusive. I think the game's even Jeff Grubb friendly. I don't know. Would Dan Reichert like it? He's asking. I think Dan would. What do you think, Sean? I think Dan would dig it. I think uh, he it's might not might not necessarily see it through to the end, but I think he would dig the silliness of it and everything like that. Just you the would characters. like the puzzles. He would yeah, like the, the puzzles, puzzles the characters. Puzzle. It's very good. Um, and you know, you know what? Gizmo kind of reminds me of Missile. Also, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have a lot to add that I haven't already said. Uh, kind of just echoing what you were saying. This game rules. I definitely think it's one of the best games on DS. I think it's one of the best visual novel-y, puzzle-y, sort of in that realm games that I've played. 
Uh, I just really, really enjoy it. And <laughs> we kind of just need to evangelize a little bit. Just, hey, go play Ghost Trick. They remastered it and everything. It's, it's a phenomenal game. Like, check it out for a little bit. Maybe if you get in a sale or something, that's a no brainer to check out. Like, if it oh, becomes yeah. part of one of those Capcom humble bundles that they constantly do, if it's at like the $20 tier or whatever, absolutely pick it up there. But yeah, it's just something that I think people who are at all into the genre, if you like obviously the Ace Attorney games, if you like uh, some of the stuff that you know I've talked about, like the the nonary game stuff like 999 uh, virtues last reward and stuff or uh Duncan rampa you know sort of that type of stuff this is certainly more lighthearted than basically all of this <laughs> but i i do think the quality is up there with a lot of them for sure go ahead nick i did think it was uh really good i as I said, I'm not a huge person into puzzle games, but I think I do kind of like the puzzle games that have a lot more story, as Sean was saying, like the Nonary games or Danganronpa or Ace Attorney. Those are puzzle games, but it's a lot to d- They aren't just puzzle games. They have to do a lot with plot, and I think that really helps elevate the series, especially this game, especially with the lightheartedness of it. It's like a game that I did enjoy playing, but it's not like something like it changed my life, but not every game needs to be that. It's just like something that was sweet and fun. I'm glad I played it. Uh, go ahead, Shoji Kodo. Yeah, I would definitely say that it's um, it's up there uh, with some of the, the, the best of them, for sure. Um, you know, maybe like low end of a Mount Rushmore or like, or, you know, kind of right there at the, the precipice of making it. Um, I'm honestly kicking myself for not having played this game when it originally came out. Like it's just, it's that good. Um, and, and it absolutely holds up and, um, you know, people should, should definitely buy it and, and support it because of just how great it is. And, uh, you know, projects like this just deserve that, that kind of support. Inofe, you're up. Yeah, I think I'm going to become one of those guys that gets really annoying What I don't tell people to, not, you know, always play Ghost Trick because uh, this game rules. Um, so uh, I apologies in advance. Um, but yeah, like I'm still finding myself. I finished it like three weeks ago. I'm still listening to the soundtrack like almost every day at work <laughs> like when I'm working because um, it's just that good. And like the, you know, the theme, the themes kind of get stuck in my head. Um, but yeah. I think this game is fantastic. Uh, the only thing is I kind of wish, wish I played it earlier, but uh, uh, yeah, this game rules. Better late than never. Mike, Go ahead, Matt. Mike, Mike, oh, real quick. What, Sean? We, we, we like Dave and talk about the music. The soundtrack slaps. We talked about it a little bit for you, but uh, okay. it's so good. It's, so, it's so very good. Sorry. No, it, you're right. It's good. It's good. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, the soundtrack is very good. You're right. I was just going to say in general that, yeah, it's just a very enjoyable game. It's uh just i i very much enjoyed my time with it just being able to solve the puzzles move move a fun story along with great characters uh, i don't know uh, there's too much to really like complain about it it's just well made and it's very enjoyable gerber go ahead i think it's just a great example of a video game story because it wouldn't work as well if it was a comic or a cartoon or even just a regular novel it needs that little bit of interactivity to really drive home the story points and on top of that it's a game you can recommend to just about anyone there's no like even in the phoenix Wright games it, mia is there and you kind of have to give the okay there's this thing where her you way younger sister gets her attributes can we call it that ways and it's a bit, uh, and I'm not sure what this. There's nothing like that in Ghost Trick. It's just there's no cringy really pervy stuff here. Uh, I'm sure there is if you try, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Uh all right. Anything else, everybody? Last call for alcohol here. But otherwise, I think that just about wraps it up on Ghost Trick, Fam Detective. A, a just absolutely lovey. Lovey, love, yeah, we call it lovey, but lovely game that I think everybody should at least try. And like Sean said, this is out on so many platforms now. At some point, there's going to be a sale or a humble bundle where you could get this game for almost next to nothing. 
Um, so if you want to wait till then, uh, do that. But try to pick up this game at some point. It is just fantastic. Thank you to everybody here who joined me. The Game Mess Game Club is uh, currently playing Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun. So our next discussion will be on that uh, new boomer shooter. So look out for that in the coming weeks. Thank you again, everybody. This has been the Game Mess Game Club. See you next time.